Hi. My name is Mayor Cromwell, and most people know me as a Gaia communicator and Gaia high priestess, <clears throat> healer and author, and also the visionary behind the Thousand Goddesses Gathering Global Grid. And yet this morning, which is Equinox morning, March 20th, uh, I've been asked by Mary Magdalene to, to, to do this video. And she keeps on telling me that I'm the one, I'm the one, this is similar to when Mother Gaia asked me to do the Great Mother Bible and I really balked and balked and Mother Gaia kept on saying, you're the one, you're the one, all you need to do is listen. And so I really wanna stress that the only reason I can do the work I do with Mother Gaia and the Great Mother team publicly is because some very gifted native elders have confirmed that I'm working really closely with Mother Gaia and, and confirmed my, my gifts, so to speak. So, so this is really a message from Mary Magdalene and also a bit of a story about my relationship with her. Uh, I've been working with Mary Magdalene for years I call her in when I'm doing high ceremony all the time. When I do it, I call her in. Um, and I can feel her energy and her conscious come in when I do invoke her, just as I feel the energy and the consciousness of the Christ consciousness, which is different, and my guardians, which is different. And so the first time Mary Magdalene really came in prominently to me was in the summer of 2000. And 17, and I was leading a womb wisdom workshops at that time, and I was about to lead one here in my simple little abode here in Maryland. And I was working with her um, at my altar before the workshop, and then I went to the kitchen, which is over there. You can see it. Not that that's that important, but anyway. Um, and she came through so strongly when I was standing there in front of the sink and started to show me and teach me how in the Catholic Church. And I was raised Catholic. The tabernacle uh, behind where the priest stands, when the priest is facing the congregation, that inner chamber with the golden doors, if it's a fancy Catholic church, and the chalice inside is really the divine, is meant to be the divine feminine. It's meant to be, the chalice represents our sacred organs, our divine organs. And the golden doors that are usually kept shut are really our right as women to only open our golden doors to our yoni, to our womb space, to our vagina, to those who we give permission to open to as opposed to being raped or assaulted or whatever, all the terrible things that have happened to women over the centuries and centuries, and, and even some men too. So, and then she started to teach me about the caves. She taught in the caves in France. And I'm hearing from her right now because she's here right now and in other parts of Europe, the caves are very important for the inner sanctum, the darkness, which is so sacred uh, that we women hold within our yoni. And she talked to me about the Cathars and the divine masculine guardians for her and her followers. And then she's told me about the golden light of a woman's womb space when a woman is in sacred union with her divine feminine and divine masculine self. And then when a woman is in sacred partnership with a divine union partner, lover, who is balanced also between his divine masculine and divine feminine self, that there's a golden light that emanates from the woman's body. Um, from her womb space, which is our sacred center. And this golden light heals all who come into her presence within her energy field. Um, she then told me about how her sacred fluids when she was in the living are really mothers, Gaia's sacred fluids, the nectar, like the nectar from flowers. And the springs that emanate from the ground is mother Gaia's sacred fluids. And she proceeded to also share more about how the flowing needs to happen again in a big way and it's starting to happen. But we as women are being called to flow, to heal our womb space and to flow. Um, and she mentioned a little bit about her mystery school. I'm going over my notes here from 2017. 
and the patriarchal control of the feminine, which I'm sure every one of you watching this is very aware of what that means. Um, but this is the time of the shedding of these old ways, snake medicine, uh, shedding the old wounded masculine ways and we women stepping into our golden uh, energy body, holding the divine, 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 sacred union energetics. <clears throat> and that Mary Magdalene and Christ, and she really stressed this, were meant to bring in sacred union energies into earth when they lived together. They were definitely lovers of the highest, highest order. Um, and yet, as we know, they didn't, weren't able to fully manifest their full potential of bringing those sacred union energetics into the earthly planes at that time as they were meant to. So, so they were lovers and the energy of their sacred union partnership was partly why Christ was so charismatic uh, and such a gifted healer wherever he went. He was in sacred union with Mary Magdalene and he was also so balanced within himself within his divine masculine, divine feminine um, aspects, but her energy supported him hugely with his spiritual work, which is so missing from the awareness of definitely the Catholic church um, and, and other circles. And, you know, so few are aware that she, he could not have done all that he did without her and without his mother, the Virgin Mary and his grandmother, Anna, really, really powerful women who he was in sacred relationship with in different ways while he was in the physical. So the healing of our sacred womb space is a journey. It's an opening, it literally and figuratively. And it's a beautiful, beautiful journey and it calls for the gentlest, deepest, gentlest kindness, self, 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 love, self, love. And it's appealing off of the layers of cultural conditioning, clearly past life traumas, all the layers that have been embedded in our soul body that block us from being in such flow, grace, balance, joy, and inner harmony. Um, and we carry this trauma, each of us, even men too, because men have been women in past lives. We as women have been men in past lives. We carry this trauma from thousands of years of imbalance and worse, much worse than just imbalance. Uh, we carry it in our DNA, our ancestral memories, cellular memories, cultural imprinting from this very lifetime, even <clears throat> this incarnation. So the healing means that we need to slow down enough to listen, to love ourselves and release. And I'm really speaking from personal experience here and not just Mary Magdalene's messages to me and other guys and my spirit teams, because I can even show you this here. Um, and the reason my hair is so short is I was diagnosed with lymphoma uh, again last August. And the scar I just showed you is from less than a week ago, my metaport being removed for uh, chemotherapy being put through that into my veins and to help me heal. And, uh, and the good news is I'm on the other side of all that. I'm much stronger. And part of what I'm gonna talk about in a moment is what Mary Magdalene did for me as part of my uh, healing adventure just in the past few days. Uh, so, so again, um, Mary Magdalene really stressed back in 2017 when she came forward to me that we are the goddess and that the divine feminine is the ultimate, ultimate innocence. That is not really discussed that much. Uh, so many people are focusing on warriors, warriors. We're really the ultimate innocence and sometimes we need to be warriors too. Uh, we're caretakers. We are divine love. We are the nectar to heal our sacred earth. And this comes forward hugely with my work with Mother Gaia. Sometimes we need to be Amazons, powerful warrior, warrior women, but we're also lovers. We're also maidens and we're mothers and we're crones. And just a little aside, my gray hair that's come in with my hair so short growing back from the loss of hair this past few months. Um, I'm starting to embrace my crone self and Mother Gaia and Bridget. And Mary Magdalene are celebrating this. So we're meant to be beautiful, beautiful beings of great love filled with quantum divine love of creator and mother. Um, and no one, absolutely no one has the right to take our energy again. No one has the right to abuse us, to violate us, to make us feel inferior. 
to shut down our voices or prostitute us, to hurt us, to deny us our sacredness, our divinity, unless we give them permission on the soul level and the physical planes. There's a lot that goes on there that most people aren't aware of. And yet there's also a big piece here for us to remember that the men born at this time, whom are peers, brothers, fathers, lovers, husbands, etc., boyfriends, they did not create this greatly imbalanced, wounded masculine system. They're only conditioned by it as we have been. They are just as wounded as we are. So while rage is rightful toward the masculine, and it's important to release our pent up anger and pain and deep, deep hurt. And I've been doing a lot of that personally for years because I have past like memories of being tortured and martyred and killed in God awful ways. It is necessary to move this energy. Yes. To release what is shut down our hearts and our womb spaces from its purest, purest divine energetics. But we also are being called to have compassion for these men for all of them to the best of our capacities. The wounded masculine has swallowed most of them up so much. They're blinded by it, absolutely blinded. And they need to heal in such a huge way. And the outlets for them to find healing are so much more limited than what we women can tap into. They're terrified. Uh, believe it or not, this is what I'm hearing on the spirit plane. And they're angry because they don't want to lose power or control. There's any way I won't get into all this. A lot of it's manifesting in the physical planes right now. And a brief message from mother. So mother gave me this message back in 2017 after Mary Magdalene came in and gave me all those messages that to remember, to remember who we are, to remember deeply, deeply buried in our DNA, our most ancient strands of our DNA are your memories, our memories of how each one of us is a goddess. And each one of us is a flowing river of compassion, energy, goodness, worthiness, worthiness, kindness, joy, ferocity when we need to bring that forward and then, and then release that ferocity to take care of the children. Um, this is all our potential to heal into. And the dam, the energetic dam, this is mother's words exactly. The, the, the energetic dam in my beloved daughters is in the womb space. It is time for all of you to release the dam, heal the river that has been blocked. From there, all of your other chakras will begin to come into balance. When you connect with me, Mother Gaia, from your chakra system, root system, root chakra in particular, and then the other ones to my heart, then the river is an even more powerful flow of healing energy. And we feed Mother Gaia too. So this is from 2017. So this is where it gets kind of interesting uh, this morning, because I kept that rather private, that all those messages I talked about in my womb wisdom workshop, but I was told at the time I didn't need to do a video about that. And so as I shared with you, I've been healing from lymphoma. I've been really on a hiatus, um, canceled pretty much all my work. Thank you to all who's funded my GoFundMe. Huge gratitude and love to all of you. And um, so several people, gifted friends of mine told me that I'm going through a spiritual initiation with this healing journey. And for a number of months, when I first heard this, I'm like, yeah, 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 that sounds great, but I'm really hurting and I'm not feeling that. And I'm actually not even hearing Mother Gaia and I'm like really despairing. So things have started to really shift for me in the past few weeks where my clarity and condition capability to hear mother and Mary Magdalene and some of my other spirit team members has really gotten enhanced. And a week ago last night, a week ago, Friday, um, I have this thing of taking hot baths like a lot of us do. And sometimes I'm guided spiritually to pour sacred water that I have from over a thousand sites around the world that's kept activated at my main altar. I pour that in the bathtub and then I have a statue of little statue of Virgin Mary over me on the sh shampoo shelf. And I have a little miraculous metal. Sometimes I put in the water with me that's very activated. And so last Friday, a week ago, I was in the bath being guided to do this, to have another really deeply spiritual healing bath really late one night. <clears throat> and it had been a, an intense day because I actually had done a message of Mother Guy speaking through me for the year-long course I teach, The Great Mother Love Way. I was pretty wiped. So anyway, 
I'm lying there in the bath and I'm calling on the Virgin Mary to support me because she's a huge part of my spirit team. And she came in peripherally, but then I felt and heard Mary Magdalene come in really strongly. And I'm like, whoa. And Mary Magdalene immediately, I, I knew it was her and I was like, hi. And from my heart, I'm sending her love. And she took me like instantaneously on a spiritual journey where we, I was walking with her on a really dusty lane, some village, which I assume was in somewhere in what's now Israel, in Jer wherever she was living for years there before she fled to France. And yeah, she's saying it was France. She was showing me, she took me to France. She's saying this to me right now. Not France, sorry. Was it France? Where was it? Oh, she's saying France. Okay, my bad. Anyway, because um, she's here right now. So she took me on a spiritual journey and we were walking together and then she guided me into a, a, a building. Um, it was like a row house kind of structure and a room that was a lot of reddish tones. And she guided me to sit across from her on a pillow. We were sitting on the floor, but on pillows on the floor. And we were both cross-legged and she put, she wasn't talking at that time. She was like, it was all me watching her in this spiritual journey. And she put this sacred oil on her fingers. And I don't know what it was. I, I don't know what it is still. Um, and she touched my third eye and I felt this subtle energy going through me and I registered, oh my gosh, this is part of the initiation that I'm going through and she's initiating me. And then she proceeded to put her fingers on each one of my chakras, starting at the root chakra. Um, it was really powerful and <clears throat> humbling to say the least. Very, very humbling. And so this was all in the bathtub, mind you, that I'm lying in hot water, uh, the Virgin Mary above me on the shampoo shelf. And she, she then asked me to... Well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, she instructed me to understand that I'm coming into myself now at the end of this healing adventure, which is what I prefer to call my cancer journey because cancer has got all these death energies associated with it. So that I'm coming into myself and who I truly am, which was really humbling to hear, and that I'm fully recovering from the healing adventure. And, this is, and then she did say, this is a spiritual initiation. Uh, this time of overcoming the lymphoma and then she i'm writing reading my notes that i wrote late last night that night after i got out of the bathtub um and as i lay there in the bathtub after she touched all my chakras and she assured me that i'm safe now that in this lifetime from here on out i am safe and she knew of all my past lives of horrible abuse and how hard it's been for me to be with men this lifetime. I've never been married. Uh, she knew far more than what I know. I know that was clear, but it's all okay now. She kept on telling me you're healing and you're safe, you're safe. And as I lay there in the bathtub, I remember opening my legs wide open and putting my hand over my yoni and, and felt it soften more. Uh, it's a really powerful healing. And remembering, and I remembered that I, affirm that I can surrender this fear of the masculine. Now I can let go of it. I can let go of my fear of the masculine. Um, and she showed me also images of goddess temples, which were getting rebuilt on temple grounds, ancient, ancient goddess temples. She gave me images of that, which was really beautiful. And that the fountains and the sacred channels of water that used to flow free, freely through those temples were getting cleared. And she encouraged me to see my lymph nodes and the way they're all connected, the way they flow through my body uh, as being cleared, flowing smoothly. Um, and she reminded me that my body is a temple as in the old goddess temples and that I can claim my body as one and visualize the temple coming back to its pure state of divine feminine wholeness. This is an invitation for all of us, not just me. And the love that she emanated was so palpable. The room we were sitting in on the spirit plane was just filled with this, started to get filled with a golden yellow light. It, it just was amazing. And then she spoke of how tender Jesus was with her, 
how the love between them was a flow of divine grace and joy and bliss. And she, re she surrendered to him as he surrendered to her. And the energy I'm feeling right now sharing this with you is just the softness, tender, tenderness. Uh, she told me that I can do this with a man now, a good man, that I'm getting ready to learn how to surrender at this level, which is really kind of amazing. Um, she's been helping me quietly along with Mother Gaia and Mother Mary and more of my spirit team. And, and again, she assured me that I'm really, really safe. Uh, and she also said that it's time for me to completely, completely forgive the wounded masculine more deeply than I ever had before, which I thought I had pretty much covered that territory, but obviously needed to go deeper. And she also encouraged me to call in the Christ consciousness to support my heart and my life with a man. Um, and one of the last things she shared with me before a conversation was complete and the blessing was complete was she asked me to give a message out to, to those who work closely with her or think they work closely with her. And this is where it gets a little tricky for me because this may offend some people. And again, it's like, don't shoot the messenger. She told me I'm the one to give this message. I need to do this. I'm the one, this person. Uh, so what she asked me to share is that while uh, many people who call on her are actually calling on her and she's coming in, there are a good number of people who are calling on her, but imposters are coming in, spiritual imposters who are not her. And this is not making her happy at all. And she wants me to share, one, to be aware of this, and two, to know that it's really, really important when you invoke spiritual beings, ascended masters, that you need to filter them. And I teach this in the work that I teach with the Great Mother Love Way and with students and clients, et cetera, that you can ask three questions when a spiritual being comes in and you may be automatic writing, you may be doing ceremony, you may be doing whatever it is you're doing. You need to ask, and this is one way to do it, that I teach, are you of the Christ? Are you of luminous love? Are you of creation? Ask these three questions to that spiritual being coming in. And if they can't emphatically say yes, to every one of those questions, then you need to ask them to leave because Mary Magdalene has not been coming in to a lot of people. It's been imposters with denser energies. So when Mary Magdalene asked me to put this message out, I talked with Mother Gaia and Mother told me that a number of her spirit teams who are powerful guardians are starting to clear these imposters because they're of the denser energies and they're not allowed on earth anymore because of the new earth coming in. Um, as the energies continue to rise on the planet, these beings are definitely being asked to leave and dealt with off the planet's, the planet's multidimensional uh, zones. But I needed to give this message out because so many people are working with Mary Magdalene, but they're not have not all been working with her actually. So know that this is taking a bit of courage for me to share this with all of you. But again, I've surrendered to serve mother and the great mother team. And so this is a kind of stuff that I get asked to do sometimes like, like writing the great mother Bible, which I was like, no mother, I can't write that book because I can't write a book with the word Bible in it. And mother's like, yes, you can, you're the one. All you need to do is listen. So. Anyway, know that Mary Magdalene loves all of you, along with Mother Gaia and the Virgin Mary. And there are more they're working with on the spirit plane who love you. And this is a really, really amazing time on earth. And the new earth is coming in. It's already here in the multidimensional planes. But we need to filter who we invoke on the spirit plane. And again, the three questions are, are you of the Christ? Are you of luminous love? Are you of creation? 
And if whoever it is you've called in on spirit plane cannot emphatically say yes, you need to tell them to leave. Um, and on that note, uh, what else, Mary Magdalene, do you want me to share? She wants you to feel her love. Oh, it's coming through my heart right now in my energy body. She wants you to bathe in her love and the love of the Christ consciousness and their sacred union energetics that all of us here on the physical plane have the capacity to heal into experiencing. On that note, wow. So much love to every single one of you, honoring all of you. Hugs, big love. Another guy loves you too.